What's going on guys, it's Caleb, and today we have a Mitsubishi EVO 1 GSR rolling sway through the shop for a detail. Now so far on the channel we've had some really cool cars, but I have to say when it comes to JDM imports my favorite one has been the Stagia. Up until now I think this one is of equal value if not cooler than that. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. I thought it was black initially, but now as we're going through this, which you guys will see whenever we foam it down, it's most certainly not. But before we do anything, we gotta get these RPF ones nice and cleaned up. I have some PNS Brake Buster diluted 10 to 1 in my IK foam sprayer, matched with some assorted wheel brushes as per usual. So sit back, relax, guys. I have a jam packed video for you, and I really hope you enjoy it. <laughs> To get the wash phase really kicked off here, we're going to foam this thing down and then get started with brushing all the crevices so that way every nook and cranny is completely cleaned out. You're going to be watching me rotate through two different brushes. I have one ever so soft detail brush from Max Shine. That's going to be one that's more softer on the paint. And we're going to be using that because the paint is soft and it is thin and we don't want to harm it more than it already is. And that's going to be kind of a recurring theme throughout this video. Other than that, we are going to use a boar's hair detail brush for the non-paint trim pieces like the plastics, the rubbers, all of that.
That is so cool. I am so excited to do this. Wow, it's actually green, not black. Now as I go through the foam phase, I've mentioned this in previous videos, I'm going to go piece by piece. So I'm going to start with the side that's most shaded and then work my way around to the side that is the most sunny. This is allowing me to micromanage the chemicals that are sitting on the paint a lot easier otherwise than just doing it all at once. Especially here in Florida, for about 6 to 8 months out of the year, my driveway is completely sunned up. There is no shade whatsoever. So being able to micromanage like this is a good technique to have, especially when it comes to cars that are not getting any kind of polishing after the wash phase, just because it really sucks to have chemicals drying on the paint. Now that the Evo is completely washed and cleaned up and moved into the shop, we can go ahead and move on to a decontamination step. Now for those who might not know what that means, essentially we're going to be taking a clay bar and clay bar in the car. <laughs> that's really it. It's just a fancy way of saying it. And then whenever you hear the words chemical decontamination, that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, I'm going to spray this iron decon or tar decon on the paint, which even if you do that, it's very important you go through and do a clay bar afterwards, especially if you're going to be paint correcting and ceramic coating like we are here. Being that this car has literally been all over the world, it's very important important we do that, but it was not nearly as bad as I thought it would be.
For those of you who are not car people or car enthusiasts or know anything about Japanese cars, this is a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution GSR. Super cool, 1992, specifically an Evo 1. So this is the first generation of Evolutions that were made. This is kind of what started the whole story arc to the Mitsubishi Evo. I will say going into this, this is gonna have much softer paint. It's a Japanese car. And for those of you who know Japanese cars, they tend to have much softer paint. But this is like a black, with a green metallic flake. I've never seen color like this. This is so cool, I'm so excited. And based off the swirls, which you'll see here in a minute when we do a paint inspection, it's pretty obvious with how dense they are that it is a little softer. It's been pretty well taken care of, it seems. There's a couple of spots in the paint that are eh, but that's, that's to be expected. All right, so let's go ahead, grab my light, and hop into a paint inspection. Now, as we go through this paint inspection process, I want to tell you guys what I'm looking for because even off camera, I'm doing my own more thorough look through. And usually the camera, I'm just trying to show you guys how bad it is because it also makes for a good before and after. Now with this, you can tell it has soft paint just because of how condensed the swirling and marring and scratching is. Usually with a harder paint car, they're more spiderweb looking and more separated out. This is more of almost like a haze that has developed just from how thick it is. So seeing that, I'm immediately thinking, okay, it's softer paint and then also accounting for that it's an older car and a Japanese Japanese car, it's probably been polished a time or two, so I'm going to play with this thing as if it has much thinner paint as well. This would be a perfect time for someone to use a paint depth gauge, I just don't happen to have one on hand currently, so I'm taking my paint knowledge and really working with that. You can also tell there's some parts of the paint as we go through, there are a couple of spots that look thin, as if it's almost been burned through, as well as maybe one or two spots where they're uh, kind of doo-doo paint, where it just kind of popped off a little bit, yeah, we're going to try to avoid that. compounds and polishes and pads and it's come down to actually using Manzerna's intensive polish which is their more aggressive medium cut kind of pop very similar to perfect finish I should say and a Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad. So Menzerna's Perfect Finish like product is what I ended up using with the microfiber pad as you guys just heard and no that's not a compound that's more or less like a medium polish almost used as a finishing polish in a lot of cases with a two-step correction. With this being very soft and thin JDM paint we did not want to go aggressive at all with any crazy compounds we wanted something very light and we depended on the pad to do most of the cutting rather than the product and that was the perfect match for the cutting step with this car you guys will see as we go along it does amazing and then we even go through with a second stage to this whole correction process and polish with a pad change. So we're going to be using a yellow pad to kind of finish everything off instead of a microfiber one.
I gotta interrupt this real quick because we actually have a new sponsor on the channel. I'm very excited for this because it's been a long time in the making of emailing me and then like six months later, I'm like, oh crap, that's actually an awesome company. And then like a couple months later, email me back and finally we have glove box detail. You guys know what glove box detail is, I'm sure, especially those who are in the detailing community. They're essentially a subscription service that you get a box every month and it has different products in it. It's just a lot of fun to get a mystery box and whenever I got the confirmation that we were all good to go and that he would be shipping out a box, I was super excited because mystery boxes are, they're a lot of fun. You have no idea what you're gonna get and then whenever it does come, it's the anticipation, oh man, what am I gonna get? And with this, I did take a sneak peek already because I was just way too excited whenever it came in. So I wanted to unbox it real quick for you guys let you guys see what I got because it's actually pretty cool. Uh, oh, first product. Detail Supply Ceramic Quick Coat. Adam Strip Wash. This is sick. If you know how you start a car care ceramic prep wash, that stuff is amazing. It pretty much strips everything off the paint so that way I can go straight into a decon process without having to worry about any kind of waxes or coating staying on the paint. This does the same thing. The only thing that it doesn't do, same thing with stoners, is it doesn't strip off a ceramic coating, mostly waxes and sealants. So that's an awesome pickup right there, especially for people who do this. And then we have Adam's Iron Remover. I actually use this stuff, you guys know that. I use Adam's Iron Remover as, I use Adam's Iron Remover all the time. So this is gonna be used actually right now with this twin turbo V12 BMW. We got a really nice microfiber tile. It's like an edgeless eagle tile, it looks like. That's really nice, nice and soft. Has not been washed yet, definitely needs to be washed. And then we got this. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna guess it's brushes. All right, I have no idea what fanciness this is. I've never seen a brush like this, but it looks like it's an interchangeable tip for brushes. That's actually pretty, and it's the color of my company. All right, so just based on my detailing knowledge and going through detailing products all day, every day, I'm just gonna go through this. Strip wash, probably 15 to $20 for a bottle. Adam's Iron Remover, I got this down pack. Uh, this ceramic quick coat, I have no idea how much this costs. I've never even seen this product. And the brushes, the, this brush set, I have no idea. Uh, I, <laughs> I like the brush because it's the color of my company. I like that a lot. I don't know if Fred did that on purpose, but uh, I, I'm, I'm really liking it. But either way, if you're interested in a very fun mystery box type of subscription service for detailing, especially for people like me who are just obsessed with this, yeah, it's my job, but at the same time, I'm obsessed with detailing products. I have a whole shelf, 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 shelf. My whole cart's covered in them. And if you are interested in doing a service like this from Glove Box Detail, it's a lot of fun to get that mystery box. Go down in the description, there is a coupon code CC Detailing. Gets you 20% off your very first order. Check it out. I really love this. I can't wait to get this month by month. And as it comes through the mail, I will go ahead and show you guys every single time. I think this is like maybe 60 bucks worth of stuff, give or take. Really cool, honestly, super cool. The prices are not that bad at all. I've taken up enough of your time. Let's get back to this Evo because it is sick. So that's from one pass. Not bad. I'm gonna very lightly hit it again because up here you can see still a bunch of stuff. Granted, this is the driver's side door, right? So they're gonna come up and constantly be hitting this when opening it. So I'm expecting this to be totally cut up and not perfectly corrected. But in here, we're gonna do some finger polishing to see if we can get that. I don't want to chase perfection. I want to do as nice of a job as I possibly can while keeping the integrity of the paint. This is a 
really good spot to show you guys exactly what I'm going for. I'm going for clarity, I'm going for depth, I'm going for color. And as you can see before, it was really just hazed up and it wasn't because of oxidation or anything, it was because of just heavy swirling from soft paint. And the after, while yes, it does still have some pretty deep scratches in there, it's clear, it has depth, it has beautiful color to it. And that's exactly what we want. That's why this job was so much fun to go through. moment I pulled the car into exactly where it's at right now and I turned my paint lights on I have been really excited to get to the rear end just because of how much haziness is there I just knew it was gonna be a crazy before and after and even though the top of the trunk was really hard to both film as well as polish just because of the wing that was in the way I tried my best to portray just how crazy of a before and after it was this upper part of the trunk face. I was kind of worried about it and I initially talked about it before where it looked like it might have had some burn through. Before I even try to attack it, I want to get these emblems nice and cleaned up. Now a lot of people might wonder, hey, an older car, you don't want to take the emblems off. Maybe it's a car like this where it's more rare and getting the proper emblems is going to be a very difficult task. You just want to clean it up. You can actually take some water spot remover with a very tiny soft bristle brush like I am here. This is a detail factory brush and kind of work that water spot remover into the emblem. That's going to get rid of that oxidation and hard water stains that you can't really get to unless you take off the emblem and polish it. After about a minute or two of really working it in and brushing it lightly, I went ahead and took my air and blew it all out, sprayed some IPA into it with a toothpick and stuff, really got in there deep and cleaned it and it turned out fantastic. Alright, so you can still see the imprint of the Mitsubishi logo that was here once before. When I come through to polish the tail lights, I'm going to be using a compound like normal and then a polish. So whenever I use regular compound on these, I'll go ahead and hit that, refine it later, call it a day, let's do the rear bumper.
One thing I want to talk about real quick is my newest toy, the Ibrid Nano from Rupes. And it's been a massive change in my detailing arsenal. So I want to talk about it just briefly because now I've been using it and I really like it. So I bought this from Obsessed Garage. I believe the tool itself was like 400 bucks and then I'm buying the one inch backing plate. This is the two inch, comes with the two inch. Came with two batteries and then a two inch backing plate as well as a 12 millimeter throw, which is gonna be perfect for polishing. Overall, the tool is way more versatile than the Atoms. The Atom one, I mean, it's cool. It's a really good entry level polisher, I would say, for a one inch type of things. But I don't know, I really wish I would've just bought this for the to begin with, and I kinda have said that over the course of me using the Atoms one, that I wish I would've just got this to begin with. I'm gonna follow just as if I was doing a normal two-stage correction and swap to a yellow pad But instead of going to a polish such as when we were just using for the cutting We're gonna be turning to a finishing polish that being Menzerna super finish This stuff gives off an insanely wicked gloss and I don't really get to use it that much because I only use it really in a Three-stage correction and majority of the things I do are two-stage majors and if I have any extra time then I'll do it But with this paint being softer and pretty much being as polished as it can possibly get Why not just go ahead and do this step and make everything even more gloss.
<sighs> all right, so I have been just all over the place the last few days, but I'm finally back here at the shop this week with Coke the Evo. This has been an extraordinary experience, just watching this car transform, polish by pad, by panel, by panel. One thing should be noted, as we go through the paint, just remember, there's not gonna be perfection with the paint because we wanna keep the integrity of the paint and I can't, I can't describe to you how important that is, especially with an older Japanese car like this. It's very soft and it's thin. That's why we did the combinations we did with pad and polish. So when we go through and do the coating, you guys are gonna see scratches. There are still scratches, but please understand that if I did chase those scratches, it would harm the integrity of the paint, and we don't want that. I will say, first thing we need to do, though, is do some toothpickery. Thanks, Jim, from White Details. He coined that term. So we take one of our cocktail sticks and a toothpick with a damp towel that's dampened with IPA, go through, and hit all of these trim pieces, nooks, crannies, and crevices that you see that have nasty polishing residue in it. Coating, we're going to be using the Drexler Ceramic Coating System once again. If you guys watch the channel, you guys know I rotate between this as well as G-Technics Crystal Serum Light with XOV4. Recently though, I've been using more Drexler just because I'm finding it a little difficult to get a hold of some CSL plus XO. Could just be me, could just be an inventory thing, maybe I need to expand my horizons to other distributors other than the Amazonians and whoever else. Drexler here is a fantastic coating system, it lasts 3-5 to five years depending on how many coats you put on. As for this car, we're going to go ahead and do multiple. So the first coat, we're going to lay it on, give it about an hour or two, then a second one, another hour or two, then we use their second bottle spray, which I'll talk about later on.
So as it stands, I'm gonna try to clean up these door seals a bit. They're not that dirty, but they could withstand some cleaning, especially with some finger polishing. I got about an hour or so before the first layer of this coating bakes and I can add the second one to it. And also a couple more hours before I have another car being dropped off. Sills are nice, cleaned up, and polished and coated. Let's go ahead, take number two top coat from Drexler and wipe it all around the paint now that we have the base coats on. This is the part that makes it really shine. It's been about an hour and a half or so since we went ahead and put on the last layer. I just wanna wrap up for the day so that way tomorrow I can come in here, put on tire dressing, and do the last little final touches. And then I have this Porsche, there you go. are our final moments with the car. We need to go ahead and put on some tire dressing, coat the exhaust tip with Q2 rim from Gion. Getting to the point of wrapping this thing up and finishing it off, we went ahead and got the tires prepped with some Terminator from Sonar Car Care and then got some dressing on them. Polished up the exhaust tips, IPA'd them down, put some G on Q2 rim to keep them nice and glossy. Wiped down the glass with some invisible glass from Sonar Car Care, which if you're interested in any of the products I use from then, link is in the description below. Other than that though, I think we're pretty much done. What an amazing car. This is literally a car that's gonna go in the history books, at least for my career, as far as I've gotten so far in this industry. I will never forget doing this car. It was a lot of fun. The before and after was astounding. Stick around for the ending cinematic because it is just mind-bogglingly clean. Is that a word? Anyways, I gotta wrap it up there. Sorry the video was late, by the way. I'm prepping to go to Tale of the Dragon and then go to Alpine Volks Fair in Helen, Georgia. So keep an eye out for those videos because those are gonna be a lot of fun. I am gonna be recording the entire experience. So subscribe and stick around. And if you like the channel, show me by leaving a like. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time with another video. I'll see you.